Okay, so welcome to the second uh, video with regard to RNAV procedures in Toronto. This time we're looking at the RNAV stars. Uh, sorry to be repetitive if you've already seen the other video, but RNAV uh, stands for Area Navigation, and that's where the acronym comes from. RNAV allows you to put many more waypoints in the same airspace than you would be able to do using just NDBs or radials uh, off of a VOR, and it's a critical component of uh, highly congested airspace that we see today. So today we are flying the return leg of our first flight. We're flying back to Toronto from Montreal. And um, regardless of which direction you arrive into Toronto from, north, south, east or west, you will be arriving via an RNAV star and you'll be given waypoints to follow as well as altitudes and speeds to follow on your descent into the Toronto area. Uh, it's not that easy to get uh, good charts for Canada so one place to find them is our website but another good place is the website flightplan.com flplan.com you do have to be a member uh, so once you sign up for a free membership uh, you'll have access to every Canadian chart available from NAV Canada and here you can see the list for Toronto there's a tremendous number of charts but you have access to the latest uh, versions of uh, these charts for um, any flight into and out of Toronto Toronto Centre WestJet 481 flight level 360 WestJet 481 good evening information Fox chart landing 24 right or two clear choice uh, Roger, information, Foxtrot, requesting uh, 24 right. Roger. Roger. 481, please descend 7,000 feet, cross the level of Toronto altimeter 299. Roger, uh, our discretion, descend uh, cross Danka 7,000s, west at 41. So looking at the chart for the Ragged 2 arrival, which is our arrival for our flight plan, we can see that the chart calls for us to cross Denka at 7,000 feet and 220 knots. And our controller has just given us the instruction to cross at our discretion 7,000 feet, 220 knots. So the first thing we do is we're checking our FMS to see that the FMS actually um, covers off that uh, altitude and speed restriction properly, which it does. And the second thing is we want to make sure that we begin our descent to cross the intersection at that altitude and speed. And the biggest error we see pilots make on VATSIM is that when they're given the instruction to s descend at their discretion, they begin descending immediately and as a result end up too low too soon so they end up going very slow uh, below 10,000 feet you know 30 40 miles from where they should be and uh, it just uh, number one makes their flight unnecessarily long uh, number two though it does create problems for the for the controller because if he has aircraft nicely spaced once that uh, aircraft begins to slow down um, it creates uh, problems with uh, separation for other aircraft. So just keep in mind you want to hit that waypoint at that speed and uh, altitude um, exactly bang on or as close as you can get it and uh, you don't need to start your descent until uh, your FMS instructs you to do so. Now that we're approaching Denka at 7,000 feet, 220 knots, we're expecting an uh, instruction to go lower and also we're going to just continue to follow the uh, the path onto the approach course for the runway. Um, you may or may not get a vector depending on traffic but uh, it's certainly acceptable to continue to turn um, towards the runway at this point. Westway 481, descend 4000. Descend 4000, Westjet 41. Project 41, we will now pass for Alex Proch for 
four right. Roger, clear ILS approach, runway two four right, west jet four eighty one. And the rest is pretty straightforward stuff. You can descend with the glide slope and then you'll be handed over to tower for your landing clearance. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the same arrival, the Ragged 2 arrival, but this time landing to the east. Uh, I'll use the example of runway 06 left. So you can see here you've got altitude restrictions and speed restrictions at Lerat, speed restriction at Verco, altitude at DARPU, DANUP there's an altitude restriction. The key thing on RNAV arrivals in Canada is you have to adhere to the restrictions on the chart altitude and speed restrictions regardless of the clearance from the controller. So if you're approaching the ragged intersection you may actually get a clearance down to 3,000 feet. Uh, if you're in the US you can descend at your discretion to 3,000 feet and ignore all previous restrictions but in Canada you must adhere to the altitude restrictions so you are expected to um, cross Larat between 15 and 7,000 feet and 250 knots and etc down the line. So that's just a very critical thing when you're descending um, on some of these stars in, in Canada. The other thing to do of course is to uh, just check your FMS to make sure that uh, the altitude restrictions are met so that um, you are complying with uh, what is charted. The last thing and another important uh, part of this uh, process is at Massar, if you haven't been given the clearance for the ILS approach, you must continue on a track of 237 degrees and not turn your base leg until given the vector to do so. Uh, in Toronto, it's unlikely you'll be given the clearance on the downwind. You'll likely be given a vector to turn. Uh, Alpha runway 06 left, a vector of 330, and then you'll be given an instruction turn right heading 030 to join a localizer, clear ILS approach runway 06 left. Thanks very much for watching these videos on the RNAV SIDS and STARS into Toronto. If you have any questions, you can post questions on my YouTube channel or ask any of the controllers when flying online with VATSIM and they'll be more than happy to help you with uh, any particular questions and issues you may have. Thanks again.